Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Sometimes when you're browsing the world of rocket science, you come across something that makes you stop and say, hmm. This is what you get if you apply the classic exhibit meme to rockets. I hear you like rockets, so I put a rocket in your rocket. These are two concentric rockets. It's a cutaway showing the interior of a rocket engine, and it's a fantastic picture of a really unorthodox engine. This is the propulsion unit from a Lance missile. It's a short range ballistic missile with a range of about 100 kilometers with the nuclear warhead or only 80 kilometers with the slightly heavier conventional warhead. It originally started development in 1961. It took about 10 years before it was operational in 1972, and then it lasted in operation until about 1992 when George H.W. Bush removed it from the US nuclear arsenal. So the reason why it has a rocket engine inside a rocket engine is because for the initial launch, it needs a lot of thrust. So it's gonna use both engines to get high thrust. The exterior engine is the boost engine. You might also notice during these launches, the black smoke, that is actually being used to spin up the rocket to keep it stable in flight. After about one and a half seconds, those engines stop and stability or the spin is maintained by using the fins on the rocket. So the main thrust chamber provides a thrust of about 50,000 pounds or 220 kilonewtons for the first uh, part of the flight. But once they get up to speed, once they're flying at Mach 3, they just need the smaller engine to maintain the flight. It's called a sustainer engine and it only has about 5,000 pounds of thrust. And that's also, uh, you know, that's 22 kilonewtons. And uh, that's also throttleable as well so they can control it and put it close to its target. So now we know what it is, let's take a closer look at this uh, cutaway because there's so much to see here. So first of all, let's focus on this middle small combustion chamber here. So the first thing to note is that the red sections indicate where the fuel is and the green sections show where the oxidizer is. I think the blue might be control valves or something, not sure about that for sure. But this central engine, you can see that the entire structure is made of some sort of ablative composite material. This only has to operate for a few minutes, but during that few minutes, it's just getting slowly burned away by the, the heat. Now, if we move up to the booster combustion chamber, then again, this sort of looks like a regular combustion chamber, but it's a slice through the engine. It's actually a, a, an annular shape, right? It's a donut shaped uh, combustion chamber with a, a nozzle that of course extends out the back. You'll notice there is actually a metal exterior coating to the, um, the nozzle, but the rest of it is has composite ablative material. On the left, you can see the design of the propellant injectors. You have the, the green oxidizer lines and the red fuel lines and those jets impinge on each other. These are unlike impinging injectors, if you remember my video on fuel injectors. At the very top, you can see that out of the fuel manifold, a pipe comes and it sort of zigzags down to the side. Now, based on what I've read, I think this is part of the thrust vector control system. The entire engine doesn't uh, gimbal for thrust vectoring. Instead, what they do is they inject more fuel into whatever part of the engine they need, and that produces a extra thrust on that side, causing it to steer. So that pipe that we see at the top zigzagging to the bottom, that's a valve down in the bottom right. And then out of the left of that, you see a smaller pipe coming, and that looks like it's injecting into an area just above the wall of the booster engine. And if you actually look at the top, just below that, there's a, a little inlet there. And I think, yeah, that is what they do, is these valves are connected back to the control system, and they're adjusting in real time to provide the thrust vector control that's needed while it's in flight so it can hit its target. I don't have many diagrams, but I did find this one showing the TVC thrust vector control valve. This is obviously a lot simpler, but it does give you an idea of the geometry of the engine. And of course, around this, there would be a, you know, a shell that would hide most of this structure from the you know, people that were operating it. After all, these devices were supposed to be operable by anyone with a small amount of training. So a lot of the stuff was hidden away. In fact, you didn't want them messing around with it because the fuels were, of course, very toxic, storable propellants. From the other side, you can also see where the oxidizer inlet and the fuel inlet lay in the engine. And here's another diagram showing the arrangement for the plumbing for the thrust vector control system. 
And I do have one image showing the top of the rocket motor. You can see on the, the right image there, there's the oxidizer inlet on the top left of that and the fuel inlet in the middle. These images, by the way, are from a presentation, a PowerPoint about cleaning up a missile that was found to be leaking. As I said, the propellant was pretty nasty stuff. They used uh, UDMH as their fuel and uh, nitric acid as their oxidizer. So when that acid started spilling, it would corrode everything. And here's another image from that presentation. This is the nozzle that has been corroded. And you can see up on the top left that it's eaten through the exterior metal jacket. And that's into the composite layers. And you see that's all delaminating. If you find a missile like this, please don't try firing it. It will probably explode in your face, you know, spreading toxic propellants everywhere. So there's one last kind of interesting thing that I want to talk about, and that is how the fuel is managed. So this is a layout of the fuel tank or the propellant tank. You have the fuel tank at the front. You have the oxidizer tank at the back. Now, when you're feeding something as thirsty as a rocket engine, you need to make sure they are continually supplied with propellant and you don't want to have any gases or anything getting into it. Now, with a big rocket that's going to space, generally the thrust is always downwards, so you don't need to worry. When you have, say, space probes in space, you'll have bladders that make sure that uh, the fuel or propellant is always pushed out instead of gas. In this case, they have a piston system that's being used. You can see place the oxidizer expulsion piston and the fuel expulsion piston. So this is a moving bulkhead inside the propellant tank. And normally the missile is designed to be stored. It's not pressurized. There's no high pressure gases or anything in this for safety reasons. Instead, there is a solid gas generator that when the missile is fired, this burns rapidly generating gas that uh, squeezes into this yellow area. And that starts to push that piston down, which in this case is pushing the red uh, propellant the red UDMH down into the um, into the fuel duct that runs down the middle of the oxidizer tank. Similarly here, this is the oxidizer tank and the yellow section is filled with gas, which is pushing that green piston down and ensuring that there is no uh, air gaps or no gas bubbles that will reach the engine. And, you know, worst that could happen is the engine could explode, but more likely as the thing's starting to run out of propellant, it might have a burp in its propulsion, which would lead to it changing course and missing its target, which is potentially a really big deal. During the Cold War, these were deployed in West Germany, intended to be used against advancing Soviet tank battalions that were attempting to invade Europe. And, you know, if you have a nuclear warhead going in the wrong direction in Europe, which is not the least populated place in the world, that could be a really bad thing. The actual nuclear warhead was a W-70, and I understand that had a yield possibly from 1 to 100 kilotons, but also the Lance was the yeah, missile that was slated to carry the Enhanced Radiation Weapon, or Neutron Bomb. But of course, the Neutron Bomb was never actually deployed in any real sense. So yeah, another thing about the Lance, I guess, is that while it was retired in 1992, they didn't magically disappear and they did find a second career. They started being used by the army to provide targets for ballistic, anti-ballistic missile systems. So things like Patriot missiles were being tested against Lance missiles that had, of course, well, they were past their sell-by date. They weren't very useful as a weapon anymore. They weren't needed for these short ranges, but they were quite good for being shot down out of the sky in missile ranges. So I actually just want to go back to the first time I saw an image of a Lance missile engine, and I did think, you know, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, what is that? And it took me a while to finally track down this gorgeous image of the cutaway and all the details that I could find. So I hope you've enjoyed this little look at an oddity in rocketry. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Shh.